In this video, we will keep working with the piano roll. Unlike part 1 though, this will not be as long, and we will cover the more practical side of it, meaning how to work in the piano roll and all the necessary shortcuts to have an efficient workflow. So let's say that you want to start programming a part in and not play it. Let's, let's do a drum bit. Now first of all, I need to create a drum region to wherever I want the region to be. So let's say that I want bar 16. I don't have to place my playhead there, I can simply go to bar 16, right click and select create MIDI region. Now another way of doing this is by opening the piano roll and then holding down command, so let me place the tilde and then go to bar 16 and uh, let me make it a bit bigger and let's add a kick. So I'm going to hold down command to change to my secondary tool if you want to refresh the tools, that's video 24 of the series, and then I'll simply add a note wherever I want. So the long way of doing it is to right click and then select create note. The way we will be doing it though is with the secondary tool. As you can see, the created notes are way too long. It's a kick. I don't need these long notes. So we can change their length. And now, every time I add a new note, it will follow the changes I have made. And the way this works is, every new note added will follow the settings of the last selected note. So the length, velocity and MIDI channel. So if I make it even smaller, every new one will be like that. All the, the notes that you add in a new project will have a length of 240 ticks a velocity of 80 and they will be MIDI channel 1. You can create your own default though. So select the one that you want, let's say that you want this one to always be the default one. Uh, right click and then go to define as default node. To add multiple nodes, let me make it a bit bigger. To add multiple notes that follow our time quantize options, use the pencil and hold down shift. So right now these are 16th notes, let's say that I want 8th notes. I can go here, select 8th notes and just do the same thing. And now change this to 8th notes. Now let's talk about resizing uh, notes, changing their length. Now we can resize them the same way we resize mid regions. We grab either the beginning or the end of the note and we drag to the length that we want. Now this uh, will obviously follow our division depending on the zoom level. Remember, if you want to make fine adjustments, you can hold down the control button. Also, if you want the note to follow the length settings of the last selected note, Add the note and then do not let go of the mouse. So I'm going to press command. I will add the note. I'm not letting go of the mouse. While still holding it, I can adjust it to my liking. And when it's the length that I want, let's say here, I simply let go. If you have a very, very short note, let's say like this one, and the pointer doesn't work for some reason, there is a dedicated tool for it. So you can open the tools and use the finger tool. That will technically resize the note no matter the length of the region. But I personally, I think that's just okay with the pointer tool. I doubt I have ever used that tool. Now you can also resize a note by holding down shift and option and then using the left and right arrow keys. So let's say this one. I hold down shift, option and then I'm using the resize using the arrow keys to resize it. Now this will follow my nuts value. And right now from, uh, from my understanding, I think it's on a bar. So let's change it to something more useful. So go all the way up to edit, and then I think it's move, yes. And then set nuts value to, uh, let's go with division. And actually let's change that here so we can see our division. Let's go to custom. So right now we're on 16th notes. So if I do that, that will resize it, we will extend it by 16th notes. And it works fine. And shift and option can also be used to resize a region on the main window. So let's say I grab this one, 
shift and option and I can resize it by 16th notes. If you do the same but leave out the shift option, so only holding down the option key, you can move the note. So I can grab this one, hold down the option and just move the key. That's called nudge and we will look at it in great detail in one of the upcoming videos. Now to make the length of multiple notes the same, select the ones that you want. Let's actually use the chord example. So not this one, this one. Uh, we can use the same key command as before, shift and option, but this time we use the mouse. So I hold down shift and option. Actually, let me make one of them much, much shorter so that you can see what difference it makes. So they are the same length now. Another useful one is to have their length snap to the same end position. So you select the ones that you want. I'm going to delete these. So I'm going to select the ones that I want. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag. And now all of them have the same ending, end position. Let's make this one shorter so that you can see it again. That's helpful when you want to maintain the offset at the beginning, and that's usually good in chords. Now, small note here, that won't work with multiple chords because the first chord will overlap with the second chords. So let's try it here. As you can see, they overlap. So let's Command Z, let's actually bring back the other chords as well. When you have a note selected, you can click the left and right arrows to go to the next event. So let's say that we are here. I can use the arrows. The up and down arrows will simply move you between the tracks in the main window up here. So I'm going to press up and down. I don't want you, go away. And you can hold shift and then use the left and right arrow keys, select multiple notes one at a time. And if you hold shift and then use the up arrow, it will select all of the top notes, so shift and up. And similarly, shift and down arrow will select all of the bottom notes. Another way you can manipulate the note is by using the event float. Now we have looked at how you can bring it up in the previous video, but we did not look at it in detail. So double click on any note to bring it up. And here it is. Or oh, another way of bringing it up is you can go to window and then go all the way down here, show event float. Here it is. Or another way to bring it up is by pressing command uh, no, it's Option and E, as in Echo. Essentially, that is the small version of the event list that comes up when you press D. So these two are the same thing. Now let's look at it. Now the first numbers are the start point of the selected events. And the events can be node or notes or a region. As with the LCD up here, they are in bars, bits, divisions, and ticks. And I can, of course, grab the, any of these and start moving them. Next, we get the name of the event. If you have a note selected, it will simply come up as note. If you have a region selected, so let's say we select that one, the name of the instrument or the preset comes up. Next, we have already seen that, we get the MIDI channel number, which we can of course change. Uh, next to that, we've got the note name and the octave number, so that one is A3. And next to it, we have the velocity. And here at the very end, we can change the length of the note. Or by ticks. Now, a few good selection commands that you might use are Shift and S, as in Sierra. That will select all the notes of the same name, uh, the same note in all of the octaves. Now, right now, if I have nothing selected, it obviously will select nothing.
If I select a node, let's say C, and I press Shift and S, then it selects all the nodes of the same name in all of the octaves. If you only want the same pitch notes, you can use Shift and E. So I select that one, I press Shift and E, and, and it only selects the ones here, so C4. Another way of doing that is that you can also just click on the piano note at the keyboard. So let's say C4, I simply click on it and it selects every available pitch for C4. If you want to select more, you can click and drag at the keyboard. So let's say we want all the way to G, and you select them like that. Now let's say that you want to skip a note, so let's say we, we don't want that A here. We can simply hold down Shift and click the note that we want to exclude, and now we'll have just the A, B, and G. The one you already know is Command and A, as in all, which will select everything. If you want all the notes, except one or a few, there are two ways of doing it. You can Command A and then hold down Shift and deselect the ones that you don't want. Or another way to do, to do it is you can select the ones that you don't want. So let's say I don't want that one and that one and then press Shift and I, as in India, and it will invert the selection. I think these, that these are the ones that you will be using the most. If you want more options, you can always go to Edit, and then Select, and then choose whatever you want from the list, or even better, learn the key command of the selection that you're using the most. Now let's see some other things. To move a note, you can obviously, you know, use the mouse. Or you can hold down Option and then simply use the up and left, up, down, left and right arrow keys. One that you will definitely be using a lot is to move it by an octave. So Shift and Option and up and down arrow keys. And an incredibly helpful shortcut is to hold down Control and Command and then drag up and down with your mouse to change the velocity of the selected nodes. So let's say I want to change the velocity of that one, so Control and Command and I simply click and drag. That's very very helpful. You can do that of course with a multiple selection, so you select all of them, then Control and Command. Also, press the keys first and then the selected note. If you select the note first and then press the keys and then try to do that, select the note, it will simply move it up and down. Now let's look at the brass tool. But let's actually go to the drum bit. Let's extend all the way here. I will set it up as my secondary tool brass tool, it's the last one. Now this tool will remind you of something. If I draw a pattern in, it does the same thing as when I hold down the shift button. The difference is that the brass tool lets you draw a pattern on different pitches. The shift command will only let you input notes on the same pitch. Now, as with the shift command, the brass tool also follows the time quantized value. So let's say I want 16th notes, and I will get 16th notes. If you have scale quantize off, then all the notes you input will be placed wherever you click. So I can click and drag up. Let's actually start deleting stuff. Now, if you have scale quantize on, then all the notes that you input will only be placed at the pitches of the specific scale degrees. For example, let's go with uh, D major. And let's start drawing something from D, okay? Another note here, another note here. Okay, so you see it didn't let me input notes here. And if I select all of them, you can see that we have the D major scale, so F sharp and C sharp. Now you can also do something similar like the shift function, 
And while using the brush tool, you can hold down Shift to restrict the pitches to only one pitch. So let's say I want a kick or a snare. Let's do a snare. I'm going to change the brush tool, then hold down Shift and go on. Now the difference is that that I can also set the velocity of the notes by going up and down with my mouse. So I want this one here, the next one I want to be lower, this one all the way up to 127, and then down back to orange again. Quite helpful this one as well, especially if you want to do like a crescendo or a drum roll. Now, if you want to use a pattern all the time, you don't have to select it, copy it and paste it. You can set a brass pattern. So let's delete all of that. Let's take the scale quantize off and let's create an easily recognizable pattern. Okay, we can recognize that one. Now select the notes that you want, so that is my pattern. And then while using the brush tool, so hold down command, uh, click control and then go to define brass pattern. Now, every time I use the brass tool, this pattern will be what comes out. So I'm going, only going to stay on B. And as, you, as you can see, it draws in the pattern. And if you no longer want that pattern, pattern, then same procedure. While using the brass tool, hold down Control and then go to Reset Brass Pattern. And goes back to default. And that is actually everything about the piano roll. Now, closing note, if you will be working with software instruments, you will be using the piano roll a lot. So I suggest that you become very efficient with it and learn more than just the basic key commands and functions. It will speed up your workflow.